Alright guys, the start of uh, part two. I've got some uh, 400 grit and some 600 grit soaking in the uh, bucket of water down here. And I'm going to have to move you for one second because I forgot to get my block. So hang tight. Okay. So, we got some guide coat on this. It's just cheap rattle can black uh, spray paint, lacquer based. We're going to sand until that's all gone. And then I'm going to run over it with some 600. just to get rid of those 400 scratches. I like the wet sand. It just seems to make a little bit less mess for me. Yeah, you can say there's water sludge and everything else, but I'd rather have a little bit of that. You can see I got this thing sitting on a sheet so that I don't accidentally slide it off of this. This is a uh, I just don't want to um, put any scratches into it. too much on this because there's not a ton of primer, there's just too good of primer on it. Um, let me get a paper towel and wipe that off, check my progress. It's a little cold to be doing this with a garden hose running. I got my rubber squeegee too. see any guide code in this section so I'm pretty happy with that already. I'll finish that off with the 600. Like I said, I don't want to sand too too much on this. I don't need any base coat reactions if I break through this. most part this thing's pretty flat. I also have a sponge in my bucket that's uh, been soaking in the water so I can also set that up here. I hate to have to prime this a second time. A few little breakthroughs are alright. sure you guys are getting this. I don't think you are. There we go. I may even throw a coat of sealer on this just to be safe. I haven't decided yet. I had a little breakthrough on this edge up here when I buzzed the DA over it from where the paint had uh, sort of pooled up previously on this edge. And I am just going to scuff that down. I'm going to feather this edge in, but I'm just going to scuff over that. 
I had a feeling that that might come back and haunt me, so I dusted it with some primer, just one coat. You can hear the dry primer spray on that. I didn't back mask it, I gave up. Black's in a, usually a color you can panel paint, so and it is a fender flare. And we got plenty of paint. I don't know if you guys have seen the previous video when I worked on this truck before. Um, there's a lot of orange peel in the factory clear, as most new vehicles are. I'll give you guys a shot of this here in a minute and you'll be able, maybe be able to see what I'm talking about. dry up a little bit. If you look at it where the primer fades out you can almost see like little dots in it and that's where the clear is not flat on it. I did sand it a little previously and I'm not going to make it perfectly flat where the orange peel was but I'll do what I can. It's like watching paint dry. Watching this I hope I'm not boring you guys. And when you drop your paper on the floor, you're done with it. Which is good, I was done with it anyway. We'll go right to that 600 that's still in the bucket. Saw a lot of videos, Thanksgiving videos, and I tried to put some stuff up for you guys that I had taped the previous days. just so there'd be something up. Plus I was having severe slow upload issues. Here's something in that. I noticed when this primer was going on that it was leaving some splatters on me. So it looked like there was dirt in it, but it's not dirt. It was just little chunks of primer. I like the product, but it's certainly not without its flaws. See just a tiny bit of guide coat left on that line. You just want to refine those scratches a little bit. It is black. I don't know why I put primer all down the side of this. I think I was thought I was doing myself a favor. But one thing, if you want the primer to stick, you got to make sure everything that primer's hitting has been sanded. Which it was. And here in a minute I'm going to go to my secret weapon for uh, finishing sanding this. I have the it's like a sponge, uh, 3M makes them, Norton makes them, and it's basically a uh, sandpaper sponge. There's just so many contours on this that I don't want to break those edges.
seen them. So this is what we got so far. Let's zoom this back out. You want your edges? Let's see if I can get close without this thing getting blurry. To be real fuzzy like that. So I'm going to go grab one of those sanding sponges. I got a little bit of a couple specks of guide coat along here, and I'm just going to go over this whole thing with a 600 grit sanding sponge. And this is what I'm talking about right here, one of these guys. This is 3M fine. This may not be 600. This might be, um, this might be 32400. We'll test the little spot first to see what kind of scratch it puts in. Yeah, that's not the one I want. And that's the only one I have, so I guess we're doomed to using the, uh, the hand block, which is okay. Actually, I could get a... Uh, Red Scotch Bright, which I do have. To finish those spots up. That's too coarse. this up in my hand. And you're supposed to always use a block, but if you're going to put paper in your hand, fold it into thirds, like so. Hold it with the corner under your thumb and put keep your fingers together. This is also the underside. I just want to make sure that primer is uh, feathered in. I'm just going real lightly at an angle here. Because I'm still going to go over this whole thing with a scotch brake just to make totally sure. And I already hear some trash in it. I don't like that kind. Don't like it to trash.
if this were a fender or a hood or a quarter or something like that, I would not hold paper in my hand like this. It's too big of an area to keep flat. Some guys are good at it. I'm not. And it's so much easier just to pick up a block and do it the right way. sometimes. Let's see what I got in the bucket. I think I have a gray scotch pad in there, which will be fine for the last little bit of this. all these corners and edges and things on here, if you break them over too hard and sand too much, it'll look wavy. So you really want to take special care on corners on something like this. sanded. We'll do a final wipe down with glass cleaner on this before paint time. good enough for the girls who go in this car.
see any scratches. Which is the kind that we like. Oh, I'm right in front of the camera. Alrighty. We'll dry that off real quick and then show you what we got. That's it for the sanding video, 22 minutes of me babbling and taking my time. That's what we got. Nice transitions everywhere. Should be nice, nice. So I'm going to get this wiped down. I got to get the heat going again in here so that we can spray it. And I got to figure out how I'm going to uh, support it. So I'll see you guys in a minute. All right, guys, final step before paint here. One last wipe down with the glass cleaner. You can see where I touched it, see what the glass cleaner is doing. Got a couple spots over here too, doing some funky stuff. I did. Alright. Those are the little things you gotta catch before you get to your paint. I had that cloth down on the table. Okay, good. No reactions. Put my gloves back on and wipe it down. Because 
that spray glass cleaner starts fish shine, you're going to have problems. Get it nice and squeaky clean. Still feeling like I need to come up with an alternate plan with how to set this thing up. I'm convinced it will sit, but it just doesn't, it's not sitting the way I want it to sit. I just hate hanging stuff up. I'd rather leave it flat like this. All right, I'm gonna kick the heat back on and get some paint mixed up. I'll bring you back in a minute when I'm mixing. All right, this is Matrix uh, MPB Premium Base, uh, paint code PX8. It's a Chrysler color. Um, the cups I use do not have a one-to-one -one column on them. So we're going to use this side column here, and I've got it to the 2, then I'm going to put reducer to the 4 and mix that up. but it's not activated, it can go back into the can. And I need to let this paint warm up, it's pretty cold. like an ice cube. I'll be back in a sec. Okay guys, cold weather painting tip number one. 
if you can take your material somewhere where it's warm, take them in the house, take them in your garage, take them somewhere where it's 70 degrees. If it's not, take a mixing cup, put hot water in it, take whatever paint clear, whatever you're going to spray, um, preferably the clear before it's catalyzed. <laughs> about 77, 76, somewhere along there on that wall. Now it's probably a little warmer over here. We're using uh, 870 reducer, which might be a little slow or a little fast, but that's what we're gonna use. Uh, another thing, got my tack rag here. Take your tack rag make it into a poof like that. Just open it all up. Tap this down real quick. We don't get any dust turds in it. Just in case you didn't notice. Floor is soaking wet underneath that table.
Okay, that's coat number one. Still fairly transparent in spots. So I'm gonna turn you guys off. We'll bring you back for coat number two. Okay, last coat of base. Had a little reaction and I didn't turn the camera back on because I had to fight with that for a little bit, but uh, we're okay now. that's that base coat is done so I'll kick you guys on in about a half an hour when I start to clear see ya. all right guys I'm gonna try and get you in the picture here this clear is going on Put it on there like you want it to look. That's coat number one. I'll bring you guys back for coat number two. I want to get the camera out of that overspray. Coat number two.
don't know if you guys can see that. I mixed a little extra for the clear gods and I'm glad I did. That's all that's left. So one place you don't want to run short. For sure. So I'll show you guys uh, what that looks like in a couple minutes. It's not what it looks like right now. It's what it looks like in 20 minutes if it's not all on the floor. And I didn't did not mention we're using the Devilbus Plus. with a 1-4 tip in it. I might change down to the 1-3 tip, but for doing the smaller stuff, the 1-4 is just... I wasn't doing a full trigger pull on everything, especially not on the first coat, good lord. That was probably... Uh, you know, let's see, where did I get it mixed to? That was 5 ounces of clear. This is not... It's a high efficiency gun, but it is not an HVLP. I put a lot of it in the air. I'm sure of that. So, I'll cut you guys loose and I'll let that gun soak for a couple minutes. And uh, we'll show you guys the finished product. See ya.